That was British grandmother Maggie Keenan earlier today. She's the first person in the world to receive the Pfizer vaccine against COVID-19. The U.K. kicked off its nationwide vaccination program Tuesday, and the U.S. could be right behind it. The Food and Drug Administration determined a clinical study of the same vaccine, quote, met the prescribed success criteria. The agency's vaccine advisory panel will discuss the findings on Thursday before voting on whether to recommend emergency use authorization. If all goes well, distribution of Pfizer and BioNTech's vaccine could be approved as soon as this weekend. The newly released analysis is shedding more light on the known benefits of the two-dose regimen, as well as some side effects. For more on that, let's bring in immunotherapy scientist Dr. Leo Nisola. He's an advisor for the nonprofit COVID Act Now, which provides Americans with local data about the pandemic. Dr. Nisola, welcome. Can you start by breaking down the major takeaways from the FDA analysis of Pfizer and BioNTech's vaccine? Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. And this is a beautiful moment. I think um, we were all waiting for this. Uh, today we saw, as you mentioned, a 90-year-old woman in the UK becoming the first person in the world to receive uh, Pfizer's COVID vaccine outside a clinical trial. And this is huge progress. Uh, the UK has a tremendous mass vaccination program, and I think the United States need one too. Um, I think that um, this will go down in history as one of the most uh, important medical research uh, achievements in our lifetime. And it's certainly one of the most impressive achievements um, for the scientific community. You, you see, if you look at some of the key milestones uh, for COVID, you see that years and years of uh, work and research were compressed into just uh, a few months. Uh, the virus was sequenced in January 10th and by May 2nd, uh, Pfizer trials begun, and by late October, the trial was already completed. Uh, so to me, there are uh, many players responsible for this huge progress. Um, one of them, and perhaps the most important, are the clinical trial volunteers. So seeing, seeing the data now and analyzing it, um, it, it adds that uh, additional layer of importance uh, for the population to enroll in those studies. Well, you analyzed Pfizer's vaccine data yourself and did find one major shortcoming. Tell us about that. Well, you're right. And every time we you take a, a medicine at home, whether that's for a headache or for something else, you're benefiting from the results of a clinical trial. And I think it's important for the broader population to know that. Clinical studies are a lengthy and complex process, but it relies heavily on volunteer participation. Uh, without those volunteers, the development of new vaccines would not be possible. And when we are designing studies like this, uh, we need to make sure that it encompasses and, and it uh, adds volunteers from all sorts of walks of, from, of life. Um, so in the United States, groups like uh, African Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanics are significantly underrepresented in clinical studies in the United States. And those statistics uh, predates COVID. So according to the FDA, um, African-Americans represent 12% of the U.S. population, but only 5% in clinical trials. Um, Hispanic communities make up roughly 16% of the population, but only 1% of clinical trial participants. So I think for me, it's important to identify the barriers uh, for clinical trial enrollment to create and identify strategies to encourage populations that are underrepresented to show up and receive those innovative uh, medications and participate on, on those studies. You see, COVID has uh, been hit hardest uh, in communities of color and underserved populations, and our studies should reflect that. In Pfizer's trial, uh, as I mentioned, it appears that only 9.6% of those subjects were African-Americans. Um, and in the future, we should aim to um, uh, show the and reflect the society we're in. Well, documents released by the FDA show that just one dose of Pfizer's vaccine offers some protection against the virus, but this is a two-dose process. Is it clear how strong that protection is or how long it lasts? Um, that's a very important point, and I, I was just uh, watching Scott Gottlieb touch on that uh, earlier on today, and it, we still don't know. It's uh, important for us to understand this um, in the coming months and, and to see how the immune responses on those subjects that have serological evidence of uh, antibodies 
uh, how they will react. Um, and of course, there's a limited power in the evidence to detect the real difference with such small numbers of, uh, of patients. But while you look at the published data, um, the conclusion is that uh, people need two doses of this vaccine today. Let's see if this changes uh, in the next coming months. Well, Pfizer's analysis showed many volunteers felt ill after receiving the second dose. What symptoms did they experience and how should people prepare for that? Yeah, um, I, well, first, the vaccine is going to be given to the person in the same way it has been done in other vaccines. It's going to be a shot in the arm. And this injection should not feel any different than the ones that folks at home received in the past. Uh, tens of thousands of uh, subjects have received those vaccines and have uh, not reported serious adverse events. So uh, I'm comfortable with the vaccine, but some people may be uncomfortable with some side effects, like some discomfort in the site of injection, uh, some aches and pains, and perhaps a flu-like symptom that lasts less than a day. So it is possible. It's not um, absurd to think that some people may need to plan on taking a day off of school or work uh, after the second shot. Yeah, once people start to get vaccinated here in the U.S., what do they need to know about precautions they should take going forward? Yeah, well, until a large number of people get immunized against COVID, we will need to be cautious about wearing masks and cautious about social distancing and cautious about uh, avoiding indoors. Uh, do not expect to uh, have a meal indoor in a restaurant without being afraid of catching COVID. This is, this is real. And I think the vaccines are going to help us get through normalcy a little bit quicker and faster, but that does not mean that we are out of the woods yet. All right, really important information. Dr. Leo Nisola, doctor, thanks very much. Thank you for having me.